Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, former Pre Burkina Bay President Blaise Kampori has been sentenced to life imprisonment for his part in the murder of his predecessor. There were gasps as the military court delivered the verdict. It's been 35 years since Thomas Sankara, sometimes called Africa's Che Guevara, was assassinated. Campare will likely never serve time. He's currently in exile in Ivory Coast, having been toppled in a 2014 uprising. The bitterness many Burkina Bays feel about his role in Sankara's death is in part fueled by his betrayal of a man who was once his close friend. Armed forces from Ethiopia's Amhara region are accused of ethnic cleansing of Tigrayans. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch say that Ethiopian military was also complicit in war crimes and crimes against humanity. But first, a military court in Burkina Faso sentenced ex-president Blaise Kampaore to life imprisonment for his role in the murder of Thomas Sankara in 1987. Known as Africa's Che Guevara, he and 12 other people were gunned down in a coup organized by his friend Campare. President Sankara was a charismatic Marxist leader who acted in defiance of Western powers. His death has left indelible national scars and the trial followed a long popular struggle. Those who were closest to him say Campare's sentencing, even in absentia, brings relief, if not satisfaction. I think that now the people of Burkina Faso and the public opinion know who Thomas Sankara was, who the man was, who the politician was, what he wanted, what the people who assassinated him wanted. From that point of view, I am relieved because we know who he was. I think that today justice got everyone to agree. The families of the victims had their truths. The accused had their truths. Today we have a judicial truth that is above everything else. I think that's the most important. From now on, the victims' families will be able to start mourning. We hope that this will serve as a lesson in an educational sense to everyone, to the victims' families to the public and to others, because this is something that has affected not only local people, but supporters outside the country. So we're hoping that this verdict will diffuse the resentment we had. In total, out of the 14 people charged over Sankara's killing, eight have been found guilty since the trial began last October. Abdul Karim Wagadrago tells us more from Wagadugu. It's taking long for this trial because uh, 30, 35 years ago, people were expecting to have a trial about uh, the assassination of Thomas Sankara. Uh, you know that uh, it's a very popular, uh, it was a very popular president, uh, not only in Burkina Faso, but even outside the country. Uh, this uh, trial has shown that uh, Burkina Faso is able to to, to stop with impunity, uh, despite uh, many challenges uh, the, that the court have gone through, uh, the trial has been uh, the sentence has been accepted generally uh, by the youth, not only in Burkina Faso but uh, even in the sub-region. Uh, the youth in general has positively appreciated this this sentence. Now, do you think that it matters that Campaore uh, is unlikely to spend any time in prison? Him being in in, in Ivory Coast as he is. For now, uh, it's very difficult uh, to, uh, to hope that he will, will, will uh, really go to, uh, to prison because uh, he's uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. And you know the relationship between uh, uh, Blaise Compaore and the president of uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Alassane Ouattara. And uh, 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 no doubt that uh, uh, he will not be released to come to go to jail in Burkina Faso. But uh, as political is... Uh, a, 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 a movement. Uh, we, we never know one day when uh, the, the political leader will change in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, it will find a solution for Blaise Compaore to come and uh, go uh, in jail. Now, for you, are there any other unresolved questions that remain even uh, after this verdict and after this, the sentencing of Campaore? 
Uh, what is uh, expected now is how the population will uh, accept this sentence and how the families will make their mourn. Uh, because uh, uh, many people have been divided in Burkina Faso because of this issue. There are, you have the supporters of the former regime, uh, Blaise Compaore. We are not expecting even this uh, trial to, to happen. Now we have uh, the sentence. Uh, what is expected now is how we can come together as Burkinabis to a peaceful uh, situation where uh, after the trial, we can make peace now because we know who is, uh, has been sentenced uh, and who is the responsible of the assassination of Thomas Sankara and uh, the 12 other people with him. So I think the next step is how we come together as uh, people of Burkina Faso to uh, make peace between uh, uh, the former uh, regime and uh, the families of the victims of the assassination of 1987. Abdul Karim Wadrogo there for us. Now, Kampara was tried in absentia as he's been in exile in Ivory Coast since he was toppled from power in an uprising in 2014. Before he came a, became a rival to Thomas Sankara, the two men shared a close friendship dating back to their youth in the Burkina Bees army. Laura Bershteka talks us through. It's the story of a best friend turned political rival of a second in command who wanted to become president. From their youth in the military to their rise to power, the lives of Blaise Compaoré and Thomas Sankara were always closely intertwined. The two men met in the Burkinabis army in 1978 and quickly became inseparable. Their clashing personalities complemented each other. One was exuberant and charismatic, the other more discreet and restrained. In 1984, it was Blaise Compaoré who orchestrated the coup that saw Sankara rise to power. But while the African Che Guevara dreamt of revolution, his ally adopted a more pragmatic approach and slowly distanced himself from the radical ideology of his former brother-in-arms. When Thomas Sankara was assassinated in 1987, many suspected Kumpaore was involved, especially after he succeeded him at the head of the country. But the new Burkinabis president always denied the allegations. Blaise Compaoré was toppled by a popular uprising in 2014 after 27 years in power. Living in exile in Ivory Coast, he was tried and convicted of the murder of Thomas Sankara by a military tribunal and sentenced to life in prison. In other news, security forces fired tear gas at demonstrators in cities across Sudan on Wednesday as thousands took to the streets to mark the 37th anniversary of an uprising. The rally also marked the sit-in outside of army headquarters that led to the ousting of former leader Omar al-Bashir in 2019. Pro-democracy activists had called for an April 6th earthquake of protests. The country's seen regular demonstrations since an army coup last October and dozens have been killed in crackdown since. And Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International say that ethnic Tigrayans have been victims of ethnic cleansing by forces from the neighboring region of Amhara. Their report accuses Ethiopian federal forces of turning a blind eye or of even possibly participating in atrocities that amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Jenny Shin has more. Atrocities that amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The words from a new report by the Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International revealing harrowing abuses of civilians in the western Ethiopian region of Tigray. The Amhara forces, including the Amhara Special Forces and the Fano Militia, committed ethnic cleansing of West Tigray to drive Tigrayans out of West Tigray through a variety of crimes amounting to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The investigation is a culmination of hundreds of interviews with refugees and local witnesses, documenting human rights abuses in the war. Since the conflict broke out in 2020, Tigray People's Liberation Front have been fighting against the Ethiopian National Defense Force, which have partnered with troops from the Amhara region. According to the joint report, several hundred thousand Tigrayans have since been forcibly expelled from their homes by military forces and subjected to widespread abuse, including torture, mass executions and rape. 
To this day, tens of thousands of Tigrayans remain locked up in overcrowded detention centers, many in life-threatening conditions due to abuse and starvation. Both rights groups have also accused Amhara forces of denying humanitarian assistance to the region, calling for the deployment of a peacekeeping force led by the African Union to ensure civilian protection. The report has been 15 months in the making, due to Ethiopian authorities keeping out journalists and humanitarian organizations, and security forces killing on site those crossing the border with Sudan to prevent information leaks. And finally, a Sudanese artist has been creating beauty out of broken things. The mosaic lover has been trying to fill more public spaces with ceramic portraits. He says the art form is rarely mastered and has been encouraging his students to appreciate just how much skill it takes to make art from chaos. Take a look. I started spreading this art form in Sudan as much as I could. I started training students, and they're producing some very good work, which I'm very happy about. We travel abroad and see murals and artwork reflecting national figures. Unfortunately, we don't have this here. The materials we use are unfortunately unavailable and very expensive. We buy them with dollars from abroad. We use alternative materials like ceramics. We devised very good solutions to using ceramics. My work is unique and I use ceramic which is available here in Sudan. Well, that's it for Eye in Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care. Sri Lanka's civil war that ended in 2009 still marks the daily lives of the Tamil minority. They were the big losers in the conflict. And after all this time, many are still searching for those who disappeared. <laughs> A people marginalized for more than 70 years, the Tamils cannot mourn their dead and are fighting to uncover the truth. Excavations of mass graves suggest the worst for families still hoping to find their loved ones and are damning for a government that remains silent. Don't miss Sri Lanka Revisited on France 24 and France24.com. I'm Gulliver Crag, France 24's correspondent in Kiev. I'm forever crisscrossing Ukraine, Poland and other countries in the region to keep you up to date with all the news from Central and Eastern Europe. Join me on Live from Paris and in all France 24's news and magazine programmes. Gulliver Crag, one of the 200 France 24 correspondents around the world.